Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, we're like a book club for people who hate reading. Mm -hmm. This week it was my pick, so we're doing the movie Fat Kid Rules the World by Matthew Lillard, and I bring you movie news at the end of the program. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Meow. and Ryan Prest. Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. I wanted to let you guys know that we do have a Facebook page, so please drop us a line and let you know, let let us know what you think about our show and if you have a movie you'd like us to do please let us know and uh, since I did Fat Kids Rule the World I'll pick I'll, I'll do the I'll I got do, it you sure? yeah okay Fat Kids Rule the World 2012 sorry a dropout comes to the aid of a chubby and suicidal high school kid by recruiting him as the drummer for his upstart punk rock band <laughs> upstart <laughs> and this is uh, this is Matthew Lillard's first long form movie. Yeah, it was directorial debut, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, he did. According to what I've seen, he did. He directed a short, but this is his first long format. Oh, okay. But uh, um, did, I, as far as, as far as I remember, I remember him going on some shows and like like doing like a Kickstarter or some like Indiegogo thing for this. Yeah, that's exactly. It was uh, it was a Kickstarter. It was a Kickstarter movie, and this is also a book by uh, somebody right, named yeah. Kale Going. Um, do you know how much money he actually raised for it? You know, I actually tried to look that up, and I didn't see exactly how much he got, because I think he got some financing, uh, an addendum to in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I guess I'll go first. I actually, the, the thing that I thought was cool about this movie, it has a, a very 90s feel to it. But more of a, a modern sensibility. Yeah, I'll agree with you on that one. Well, I, yeah, I think it's <laughs> indicative to the to the low budget. You're kind of going back to sort of '90s technology. Well, the thing about this movie is it made me like reminisce to all the mosh pits and the underground <laughs> concerts I used to go to all the time. But when's the last time like, you had a drummer throw up all over everybody? I'd never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> right before he right before he said it, I had the thought in my head like that's punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, did that take place? It looked like it was in a. One of the storage facilities, like That's actually what it in like. one. There probably was. We have one of those types of like little warehouse uh, gig spots around around like downtown parts of LA and 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 out the outskirts. So yeah, we one of those types of places. <laughs> we um we we used to just do like community halls and kind of get kicked out of a couple community halls. Yeah, it got a little <laughs> rowdy. Well, I mean, there was one where there was like a foot and a half gouge in the floor from after <laughs> we got done moshing. <laughs> Hardwood floor. There is a couple <laughs> of places just sunken in. There is a couple of scenes I love. The I actually love the cinematography. the The one play, the the one scene I remember. I actually thought it was really well done. Is when the main character was walking from the kit uh, from the front door from the kitchen, and he didn't walk in front of the camera. He oh, walked yeah. into the, uh, the the door that was in that area, and you watch the camera pan across the thing, across the wall, into the little open door, and watched him grab something to the fridge, then he walked towards the camera. Yeah, that, that was actually an interesting little uh, idea for that one. I actually really liked that. I was really impressed. Yeah, there were like, some interesting things, because, I mean, it was like they really got into some really uh, uh, tight areas. Like, even when they were in the apartment, th there was uh, quite a bit of things that were, uh, it looked like they were actually in an apartment, yeah. I think. Or in that storage facility in that, you know, when their first actual gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I threw up. My, my, the, the, one of the questions I had is, how did, I don't, he, because it looked like he lived in an apartment. How did no one hate him for practicing the drums as much as he had to? I don't know. Well, yeah. I've known some people that lived in kind of like apartment buildings like that. And as long as you're like renting out both floors, I mean, the neighbors will get irritated. But you don't necessarily mean that you're living with other people in there it could be just a small house okay because so that's what i i think, I, that's I think he mentioned that one of the neighbors was half deaf or something oh i don't remember keep that, it down you know after a certain time but yeah in an apartment you know the the, the kick pedal hitting that ground <laughs> yeah that, that's gonna that's gonna rumble some stuff <laughs> i bet a people cross the street for like shut up but you know um this movie i was expecting it to be a lot w worse than it was i mean it was one of those things that coming into it in the beginning of the movie i'm just like is this movie really gonna like suck as much as it seems to and then it turned itself around so that was actually something that speaks for this movie that i th kind of thought I'll, about. I'll be honest i'm kind of a matthew lillard fanboy i like most of his characters because he so most of the characters he plays are kind of offbeat you know like sl punk he played serial killer and hackers so he yeah. does he does characters that are 
you know, are more interesting. So I figured, okay, this is something he wanted to direct. It has to be in his sensibility. Mm. Something right. that and, well, and he's always one of those actors, you know, like, oh, if we're going to hire Matthew Lillard, they know they're getting, like, the punk rock Matthew Lillard, you know yeah. what I mean? Because that's, that's what he is. Like, yeah. you know, but, that's what he's known for. But all in all, I mean, this one, like you said, it has more of like a 90s kind of um, um, indie or not even indie, but, you know, kind of cult classic well, film I, feel to it. Like the, the best way to describe that would be like uh, <laughs> noisy in here. I guess the best way to describe it would be like Empire Records. It has that era in film kind of feel to it. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. A little bit, a little bit thrown back. I was thinking of one of your uh, your films that you took a long time tracking down was bandwagon yeah that's kind of what it made me feel like i was kind of getting into but you know and i i would say it's not as good as bandwagon bandwagon is is is, i would say is a little bit better but you know it's different storytelling different characters different things so it's really you can't compare the two that well but um I also That's kind of what I made me think of, and I grew to actually care about more of the characters. I did kind of like the th- fact that um, he took uh, his daydreaming into kind of a reality feel where it showed you like when the dad track catches him and takes a box cutter and cuts his gut open. Yeah. You know, type thing, or I, when I, he, like, the initial scene where he's standing and yes. kind of steps out into the bus and just you get like this big thing of just blood and guts everywhere like that was burst that was, a bag my thought with that was that was a hell of an opening scene just yeah, walking it out <laughs> it's like whoa well, jen watched it with me and she's kind of like after that she's like i don't think i really want to watch much of this movie anymore <laughs> yeah but she continued through it and she kind of at the end of it she's like you know i actually enjoyed it well so. look i if, if i could jump in to to just my whole feeling of it because it's pretty succinct but uh <laughs> it's go ahead it's, it's easy to like movies um when the subject matter you know relates to you and whatnot so you know a lot of us try to you know like oh okay i like this type of movie so i'm gonna watch it and you mm-hmm. like it based on that um this movie it it had such a sort of a specific type of thing with this you know obviously it was a high school movie sort of in general but then the whole punk rock element um which i love but aside from that like i felt like, oh, okay, this is going to be like a punk rock movie. This is going to be awesome. And then all of a sudden, it, it sort of turned into this, like, incredibly, like, personal story. And then I'm thinking, sitting there thinking the whole time, like, oh, shit, this is Matthew Lillard doing this? Like, it just seemed like, um, like he, I mean, he must have just obviously read the book and, and realized, like, oh, man, this needs to be put out there. Because it was a really, it was a simple story, but it was, re- I mean, it was, it was all heart. That that was all this movie yeah. was, was just a, yeah. a heart story see i think even though it was a, a very it's a, you know very simple story very simple plot the characters in this in the show are each one it's a very diverse character wise yeah i was gonna bring up uh, <clears throat> matt o'leary's character marcus yeah that was, the way he, he was the, played the character was really a lot like friends i had <laughs> by the know? way was that really <laughs> punk rock whoring yourself out to dudes in the bathroom yeah or? that kind of took a turn man like i <laughs> yeah. thought it was just kind of his friends busting his balls but then all of a sudden it's just it was like Oh shit, man! Like that's yeah. punk rock. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I actually liked the way he played that character. It was really uh, kind of like you know, it was like I knew friends like that that were just like that. So, because his character really seemed to be the type of person that used everything up and went to the the to the next person until he met the what was the main the main character Troy name? until he met Troy, yeah. who this seems like the first time that he ran into somebody that genuinely is like. He's my friend. I'm going to care for him. Seems like the well, first time you run into that. The first person he met that, that after he screwed him over entirely that still stuck around. Yeah. 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 But it was the fact that it you, there was character development that happened during yeah, the movie yeah. over that. Like when he was in the hospital and type thing. And <clears throat> Excuse me. And, they both um, kind of helped each other because the, yeah. you know, what's his name? Uh, what was the, the druggy guy's name? Marcus. Marcus really kind of gave the guy a direct Troy a direction. And so, you know, I think it was more right. like Troy going, okay, he gave me a direction. I need to pay I pay it forward. Well, not, yeah, not yeah, just yeah, that, back, but, <laughs> but he saw that it was a change in his life. Like when he's sitting there and he's kind of like playing the drums and then he looks over at his computer like, oh, yeah, he used to do that. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really ended up liking the arc with, uh, with the dad. Oh uh, yeah, the, with some great performances turned in by uh, Billy Campbell. Yeah, I and I like Billy Campbell. He's one yeah. of those guys that you you look at him and and you kind of forget about his character in one movie or a TV show because he's done TV shows quite a bit too. Yeah, a lot of TV. Um, but 
I, no, I really um, okay, liked his character. Second. First of all, that's the Rocketeer. Yeah. Is it, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. He's a Whoa. he's a one of those actors that you that you kind of forget about. Like I said, you I was, forget I about him. Five but, minutes into this movie, and I had to pause it because I'm like, "Who is this guy? I, I know this guy. I know this guy." And then I I scrolled down his IMDb page, and it just hit me. I'm like, "Oh shit, that's the Rocketeer." Yeah, this I guy did is the like same a childhood thing. hero of mine since I was like four. Uh, yeah, I did the so exact same thing with him. <clears throat> but I I like the fact that um, when they're all sitting at the dinner table, it shows how much structure he had in his house. Mm-hmm. Where right. Marcus sits down and he's like just kind of grabbing everything, and both of the f- boys' faces is like, "Is Dad gonna kill this kid?" Because <laughs> I liked the I liked the impetus of that. Far as he was in the military, so he's a very structured guy. And after his wife kind of died, it showed him going back to the only thing he knew how to do. Right. Was yeah, and that's how he was gonna raise his kids. He's like, I know this structure, you know, so that's what I'll give to them. Yeah, and you could see with the introduction of Marcus, kind of throws a monkey wrench into the situation, and it it changes everybody because you see later on towards the movie of the dad going, kind of seeing like my son cares for this kid, and there's a kid I can actually help. Yeah, right. you could like, see him dad changing. Things he's doing, but the good things that he's doing makes him a good person. Let's you know go with that. You know? Yeah, let's yeah. kind of help this guy get he uh, got, get he, order in his life. Cause he got in a crappy situation. But we know we can help. Type yeah, of thing. it's basically a dad who knows that his kid is really good. He's a good-hearted kid. You know what I mean? Has a lot to offer. But so as soon as he has the opportunity to help him out, he's obviously going to be right there. You know, he I, just I, wasn't expecting it to be punk rock and drums. Yeah. I, I, I have to say though, I love the scene with that stuffed animal, and they're in the kitchen table, and he just opens it up, and for like a good couple of seconds, you see nothing but pills keep falling out. Yeah, that was such a funny scene. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but I do got to say I did not like the way this movie ended. Why? I just think they cut you it off. You to hear the song, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, I wanted to see what the ending was because, I mean, they just kind of like started the, to play and then they cut it off. You I, know? And you it was kind of like. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with them leaving it ambiguous. The only thing that I was kind of bummed out is when he was sitting on the, stu- uh, on the, uh, the steps waiting for the guy to show up and he was uh, tapping on the bottle. He actually had some really good chops. So yeah. that's really the only reason I wanted to see him actually play. <laughs> yeah, and I actually kind of mentioned it to him when he, to Jen when he's on the bus. I said, I've seen Ryan do that quite a, quite yeah. a bit, is where he's like kind of tapping on everything. Yeah. Because <laughs> you used to do that too. Yeah, totally. I, well, you know. Drummer. <laughs> yeah. You, you have a drum set, which, you know, is like a certain, between certain hours. And then you start pissing people off. <laughs> so, you, know, you tap on everything else. I have to say, I I uh, I have to agree with James because this seemed to like you know his the opus moment. This was the accumulation of all this pain and heartbreak. I really wanted to see it, just to see that you know the, the fat kid, as it were, just to wail on the drum set, just to you know wow everybody. That was the one scene I really wanted to see. Yeah, yeah. but you're sitting there and you you get you like you said you get torn through this whole heart-wrenching story and then you get to the climax of it and then it's just like no 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 no. but i'm actually (laughs) i i I agree with james but i'm also like you know i also i also totally get why you would cut it short well i get why i'm not saying that i'm just saying that i would have liked to have seen that and now we have something talking to us yeah where'd that come from but you know i'm gonna have to actually buy this movie I'm going to have to buy the DVD and actually see if there's any extras on it. Cause yeah. I, uh, oh, I'm sure there has to be. I mean, especially some, you know, some, some interviews with some, some of the people or something. Yeah. So I but, guess um, the, the, the question here is, since this is, um, after everywhere I've, I've, I've read, Matthew Lillard's directorial debut, what do you think? I mean, if you compare everything he's ever done or other directors... I actually want to see Matthew Lillard direct more. I really uh, love the sensibility. I mean, of if he's going to get performances out of out of people like this and, and keep telling these, like I said, really you know nice personal stories, I mean, that's hell yeah, I want to see yeah. more of this. Uh, yeah, I agree. I I would like to see him continue on. Um, I think he did a great job. Like Ryan said, you know, he pulled out a lot of good performances from dip, a mixed match of uh, actors. I mean, some young actors, some who have been around for a while, and some very strange uh, characters whereas yes. the, uh, the audio <clears throat> yeah. between them like yeah. the, the, the one chick who you know said I, I slit my wrist you want to see it you know yeah, which thing. by the way yeah. I knew people like that so Dude, yeah so that's the thing is yeah, like, they actually I, showed I feel scars. like I went to high school <laughs> yeah. with half of these people 
Yeah, exactly. I think that's what it was more because, I mean, I don't know if I haven't gone to high school recently, obviously. Right. But, you know, it's <laughs> it kind of takes me back to kind of the things that a lot of kids were doing in the 90s. Right. It was really, it, really easily relatable. I mean, that that's a credit to the writing right yeah. there. Yeah. But I think it's also a credit to the director that makes it come across. Because if you put, like, Uwe Boll in this movie and directed it, it'd turn out to be this hodgepodge of odd coincidence versus a very well intertwined story. Well, you also got to yeah. remember that he came from, like you said, SLC Punk, which mm -hmm. was the cult film for yeah. all of the 90s people. It's like, oh, you want to see a movie that you can really get into? You know, because right. there was a lot of things in there well, that I were mean, really, 90s you break things. It down, so. That's what indie movies are, man. It's 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 people feeling that their group or their type of person is unrepresented, so they kind of do it themselves, low budget, you know what I mean? And it ends up being something like this, where it's, I mean, it's incredibly honest. Yeah. You, you find all of these movies, you yeah. know, like, um, it. I mean, you obviously can tell whoever was writing this went through something a lot like this, you yeah. know? Yeah. Or, yeah, at least had some sort of experience to realize, you know, how the outcasts of society actually have a lot to um, add. Yeah. I'm pretty convinced the, the writer must have been a drummer just because of the scenes when he was learning how to play was so, so kind of spot on. So that's actually what I was going to ask. Is, as a guy who was a drummer, was there any scene to you that made you that really stood out where he was drumming, strumming, All, anything? The whole was like, time no. when, when the guy is trying to teach him how to play the frustration that he's just like oh shit this is what i'm working with and, and then just trying to like okay look and matter of fact the the one line that stuck out he, at, towards the end is like if you're gonna yak throw up on this one it's cracked already <laughs> it's just that's the mentality is like look it, this one's already screwed up so wreck that one well i would say more of like this i mean if you've ever played any instrument drums guitar anything you well or suck and if okay. you if the first you've ever time tried you do to it. teach anybody any instrument, you when you're listening to somebody who's not getting it or understanding it the way that you've sort of learned it, and it's it's it can be incredibly frustrating. And and you pretty much do start out the way that he does, where it's yeah, like absolutely. you you just kind of start me. hitting, and you're like, does this sound even okay? Because it sounds like shit to me. <laughs> the great thing about about Marcus's character was he was telling. I mean, this whole thing was like, look, it doesn't matter if you play good. This is punk rock. Hit yeah. hard. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just hit hard. Make it make it sound. That's it. Doesn't sound good. Just make it sound. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, punk rock intensity. You know, it's all about anti-establishment. <laughs> yeah, and, make it, and really screwing up the lead singer by not being on beat. Yeah. So you know, as far as I'm concerned, this movie, I, I wouldn't put it up to a four, but I will give it a definite strong three. You know, what, dude, I'm 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 gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a four, dude. I uh, just one I I. I really connected to it, you know what I mean? Like, like the like I said, I mean, I just I felt like I went to high school with some of these people, you know what I mean? And most of them, and and the writing really stood out as as one of the better, you know. I mean, like I said, this is why people make indie indie movies because they believe in what they're doing. Yeah, and yeah, this is what I comes out. I have to give it a four. Um, I, I like this movie. I and the fact that I guarantee I know who some of these people are who I went to high school with. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm I'm pretty sure some of them are you know still doing the same thing. Oh, but I guarantee at least three of them. Are. Blowing people in a park. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay, I'll go with that. I'm pretty sure I knew some people doing the same thing. But yeah, Wait, I just, what? This is a strong <laughs> four out of five. I really liked this movie. Um, I like the fact there's an actor who I actually really like did it. Um, so I just can't. I, I like this movie. Can't wait to see what Matthew Lillard does next. Uh, directing, I, I, I'm actually really excited about that. No, I get that. I, I think a lot of people are going to be giving him a lot of chances based on this too. I, I sure hope he, so. I hope he does. You know, because um, I know I know a lot of people that give him crap for being you know shaggy when I actually think he does a really good job on. He was that. the 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 not the problem with those movies. No, I See, agree. It was, I, it was literally everything else. Exactly, <laughs> I completely agree. I agree. I don't think it was all. I don't think it was completely the actor's fault on that one. I think it was. Yeah, you could have pulled off his character. <laughs> I, th I think they could have had everybody read a phone book, and it would have been better than what was written. Well, Sarah Michelle Geller was playing dumb, so she pulled that off. Okay. Wow, so much for showing this to Matthew Lillard, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, he can watch it. <laughs> he got good praise. I'm not saying anything about her. 
personally, well, it's just dumb. But, <laughs> hold on a second. I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So I'll I agree. Uh, Buffy was about the only good Buffy role she ever did. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, the movie news portion of the show. And one thing I thought was interesting is Brian Cranston of Breaking Bad is open to playing Lex Luthor in and the you Batman know, I versus saw would be that. the greatest effing thing I think I've ever heard. Uh, I agree. And an addendum to that is what do you think of uh, Ben Affleck? Nah, I, okay, hold on a second. Before anybody starts. I wasn't going to get there. Seriously? Oh, sorry. Okay, hold on. Did I ruin yours? This, this, it's fine. this has upset me for the past five days because uh, 14 people have been calling me like, dude, what do you think? What do you think? I needed to hear your opinion because I knew you'd be pissed. I knew you'd be pissed. And it's like, hold on a second. I'm not pissed and I'm not happy. I'm reserving judgment till I actually see the movie. Wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, hold on. Hold, re, the, re, re, hold the phone. Okay, I, I'm gonna keep quiet. John's got a couple things. I wait. So you're holding judgment? Seriously? Dude, look, I've seen Ben Affleck do things that are that are terrible. I've seen Ben Affleck do things that are pretty good as far as his performance is concerned. Oh, what the Batman hell? Batman in particular some... has had a bunch of different versions. The okay, there's a bunch of different <laughs> ways that people can do it. If it's not the Joel Schumacher, hey, it's a comic book. You know what I mean? Then it's okay. If obviously they know that Batman is a character to be taken seriously. Everybody freaked out when Heath Ledger was going to play the Joker. How could you do that to Jack Un Nicholson, they says. Uh, unless I you're mean, the, the calm guy... Calm down. <laughs> unless you're the guy who created Batman, who apparently says Val Kilmer did the best job. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, which which version right? is going to be what? I mean, it, it could be good. So, okay. It could on. not be, but let's not freaking freak out yet. You want to... You want to save this for later? No, no, no. Uh, we're we're get, we opened it up. We're going. We're gonna get into this. Okay, now, <clears throat> really? Yeah. Really? Are, are you sure? Yeah, dude, seriously, come on! All the stuff that he's done bad, he's done a, kind of a while ago. Okay, but this is coming off of I know one he of the ruined Daredevil, and that's going to be everybody's thing. And and I know you're going to say, oh, he's coming off Argo, and it was blown out of proportion, but he still. Seems like he's grown enough to be able to pull off a semi-serious role, dude. Okay, stop putting shit in my mouth when it doesn't belong there. First of all, Argo so that's what I'm smelling. was a good movie. Great movie. And he did a good job in that, okay? But tell me what about him, what about Ben Affleck, says Batman? Ryan thinks he's cute. Nothing. What about Heath Ledger said Joker? Yeah, there, he has a good point. There. You do have a good point. There, I mean, but hold you on. don't know what version of Batman they're gonna try to do, so they you don't said know. They said the he's... freaking Dark Knight in the thing, so he's supposed to be the Dark Knight. This is That's supposed just to be the Batman now. This is Superman meeting Batman. This is coming off of the back of Man of Steel. But it's yeah, this is hold on, hold on. Both so this is hold on, hold on. Both of you be quiet. I actually have a point to add. The rumor I've read is it's going to be an older Batman meeting a new superhero. So this is going to be kind of the... Allegedly, this is going to be the gruff, older, I'm tired of dealing with young punks Batman. This is what the rumor is. This is the Batman that Superman has to come over and deal with because he's killing people. This yeah. is where they're coming from. That's, the that's what I'm bringing up to. Do you think Ben I Affleck... Think that's what they're going to do. Do you think Ben Affleck can play that hardcore of a Batman? I actually I don't think, think that's what it. they're going to do. But it says in the description, the Dark yeah. Knight. That is who the Dark Knight no, is. No, no, no. But hold on a second. That is that's they're not. The, they're they're just calling him the Dark Knight, dude. Don't. It's not a reference to him. And re, uh, look. Well, then they need to do their people. own. He used guns in like the original Bob Kane version of the comic books in like the forties. So well, here's the okay. Question. Nobody's. He hasn't killed anybody in a long long time so we're here's, talking close to 70 years well here's the question then if they're not if, gonna make that if bad. if they make them that way they're setting up jla i know that's what i'm saying well well here's the th okay then the two-part question then if they do the gruff gritty the dark knight version of the batman do you think he could pull it off or do you think it's going to be like the JLA cartoon where he's more the family-friendly gruff Batman? No, no, it's not going to be family-friendly. It's not going to be Joel Schumacher. It's not going to be Dayglow paint on people's faces. It's going to be sort of set in the same kind of uh, style as Man of Steel, obviously. Well, do you think? Do you so? Do you think Batman? Uh, do you think he could pull off the role if they do? Yeah, it as long as look, as long as he looks good in whatever bat suit they put him in, that's that's all that's going to matter. Is if so you no can nipples? see the chin. <laughs> and it looks halfway decent in the cowl. So, you know okay, I mean? so other than that, he's he's probably going to do a halfway decent job. So okay, the next news. I mean, look, he on. turned down directing it. Let, let me just that? let me just finish this part. Okay, 
I actually did not dislike the way they did Man of Steel that I much. Really liked it. Um, I think it was a turnaround for the Superman uh, um, genre, the, the Superman story. Uh, story, whatever. Now, I am not. I, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I needed back off from my preconceptions or you know uh, verified preconceptions of Ben Affleck and, and give him a chance I gotta give him a chance because I'm not gonna dude, nothing line, I can say can get him movie. out of the role he's got the role so he's gonna do it I and hope that he, watch it I point. hope he does a good job and the way they're portraying it, it I really hope that this is the hardcore totally badass Batman that Superman has to come and try well, to to what deal it's, with. What it's probably going to be is is sort of Batman has his way of dealing with things. Obviously, beating the shit out of crime, um, and Superman has his sort of Boy Scout ways. Obviously, because he has more ability to just run up, kind of grab you by the nap of the neck, and and call it a day. Obviously, Batman's a man, and he can't do that. So it's probably going to be sort <laughs> of Batman man. looking at uh, Superman like, the, oh, you're this Boy Scout, you know what I mean? And then they have contention, and then they end up working together in the end. See, it's not the, a difficult arc to figure out. The part I'm waiting for in that is when Superman realizes that Batman really is the most dangerous person on the planet. Seriously. That's the part I'm realizing, because if you ever actually read the comics or look at the, uh, look at the, the cartoons, you always see that everybody is a little leery about how much Batman not only doesn't trust him, but knows about him. Yeah. Well, everybody everybody sort of trusts Batman to be Batman, and they know he has his motivations that aren't going to be shifted one way or another. And you know nobody's going to fuck with a bat. Well, but the, the thing is, there was a great uh, JLA um, uh, book, um, and I can't, I'm not going to remember the title, but it was, uh, I think it was Doom. Basically, Batman in his in his files has yeah, a contingent for everybody doing. in the JLA to know how to like yeah. take him out if necessary. Anyways, um, <clears throat> we got to let John move on with the, his okay, news. But the second one is a character that I absolutely love, and I'm not sure how I feel Felix about the this. Cat? The next one is the rumor is Marvel wants Joseph Gordon Levitt to play Doctor Strange. No. That's um. Well, here's here's. I was expecting that Doctor Strange would be a little older. Well, see, and that a little was, taller. See the. Well, you know, whatever. <laughs> All actors are short; they make them look tall. You see the the, the the tall factor. Could be the Tom Cruise the, trick. The, the well, taller factor. Exactly, dude. If you can make Tom Cruise look tall, <laughs> I was like five five. Because the, the the tall factor doesn't bother me. It's the fact that I always thought Doctor Strange is being kind of. I guess older, maybe mid forties, mid fifties. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah, middle aged at least. Yeah, you know, kind of. And that's the the thing I'm going to see. Not right out of his residency. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest. I'm a little worried. Far as the, the same with the, the the Superman and Batman, I'm worried about that again being cartoonish, and I'm kind of worried that the Marvels headed that way. You know, well, who, who is you, directing it? I haven't. Uh, you know, I don't remember that one, and the link for some reason is not liking me. So. Okay. Maybe now, the last time I heard anything about Doctor Strange, I mean, that was pretty pretty deep in the rumor mill, too. I mean, as far as, yeah. like, hey, this might be a movie. I mean, is he officially attached to it, or is this just, again, on the rumor mill? This is a rumor mill. And this is, I'm not sure if this is Phase 2. This might be Phase 3 of the Marvel Universe. Because if you, you read the news, they're talking about, you know, the first phase was Iron Man, the introducing the JLA. I'm not JLA. I'm Avengers. Avengers. Practically the same damn thing. Um, you know, and the second one was going to be um, Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff like this. So. Well, and then they're going to do Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on TV. Yeah, which I'm actually, I can't wait to see. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> so, well, you know, I, I, I can't wait for Doctor Strange because he's another character that people play off and they don't realize the fact that, you know, in that universe, he's pretty powerful. He's the, you know, Sorcerer Supreme. So I really can't wait to see how they play this. Well, and you know, in in a, in a day where I mean, what we just saw Pacific Rim, you know, wh whether you liked it or not, I mean, that movie was gorgeous. Yeah. And so, in a world where they can do that, I mean, you know, I I'm, I look forward to all the stuff that I, that's expected to have sort of heavy CGI because I feel like they can pull it off at least. What, by the way, what is with that movie and Oz the Great and Powerful look like an HD TV commercial? Yeah, I mean, it almost well. It's like next yeah. thing you're gonna see, you're gonna see a Samsung ad. You know, it's like, look how pretty these movies are. Holy crap! Just bring back product placement. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I, I would um. Dear God. 
anyway um i would like to see i don't know i, I think just he's okay he's an okay actor i kind of wanted to see him that was one of the guys i was going to throw into the mix when we were talking about the ben affleck thing is i would have liked to have seen him go into this I like universe the of superman he, look he's I even like skinnier older. and smaller than than christian bale was and see at least at least uh ben affleck's a little bigger I, I, he's I agree with you on a that. Little, a little but heavier to him. You I'll know, be honest, throw him in as Doctor Strange, skinny, skinny dude. I, I mean, you I, go from DC to Marvel. I'll be completely honest. I like the older, gruffer Batman, so I kind of like the age of Ben Affleck. I, actually, I agree. So here's an idea. What about George Clooney, far as Doctor Strange? No, no, no. I actually like, like the one that I just looked up. I just found that um, Daniel Day. Lewis. Uh, no. would, he, he's hold on. Yeah. This is what I just read. Is <laughs> I can't wait to see the here behind scenes. He referred. I would love to, to see him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like like. The, hold on. The, let, me just, <laughs> let me just put this in. Uh, they found out that I um, am Sorcerer Supreme. <laughs> uh, Adrian Brody, Vigo Mortensen, and Daniel Day Lewis all went into uh, interview for the role. For, for really for Doctor Strange for Do- for Doctor Strange they went in for the interviews. Oh, Vigo would oh, be Daniel awesome. Daniel Day Lewis would uh, just just how much he would irritate his wife. And, <laughs> and it said that Daniel Day Lewis has been studying for. He actually was saying that he has been studying for this role for two years, <laughs> studying with the ancient one with sorcery. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> See, Jesus, that would be the fucking greatest thing I think oh, ever. I so. actually I mean, think up he... there with Cranston doing. Uh, Lex Luthor. He yeah. did. He uh, from everything I, I've heard, he retired for a little bit after Lincoln. I'm I'm assuming it was either that or divorce. But <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, the, you got to take a break. The method acting behind that would be matter of fact. That would be almost probably better than the movie. The documentary. Somebody would you had, like to see on, me man. pull a rabbit but out of my hat? Do your job, Hollywood, <laughs> and document that dude method acting Hugo Strange. But I'll I'll, I'll be honest, Viggo Mortensen. I like him as an actor. I do, too. I actually sure. think he could pull this off. He may so, not look uh, like it, but he's a guy, if you've ever seen Eastern Promises, sure, I know he could yeah. do really I don't know wh- who I want more for it, if it's Vigo or Daniel. Well, and I was going to bring up, before you brought up those two, about Joseph Gordon-Levitt, look how old they made him look in uh, Looper. Oh, that, you know, that's so they point. could. Yeah. Uh, stranger things have happened, yeah. and he's turned in good Doctor enough Strange. performances. So. so, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Real Flicks Reviews. I gave Fat Kids Rule the World a four. James gave it a three. Ryan gave it a four. And next week, we're doing the movie South Central. It was James's pick. And What's up? I'll see you then. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs>